If you want to keep up on what's happening from a national security perspective, there's only one way to go about it. Read, 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 and read some more. Hi, this is Phil Gursky, and you're listening to Quick Hits, a short podcast about all matters pertaining to national security and public safety. few occasions recently where I have had emails or messages from people who ask me very simply, how is it that I keep up on what's happening in the world when it comes to terrorism and broader issues of national security and public safety? These are people who follow me on, on Twitter or read my blogs or listen to my podcast on LinkedIn or Facebook. And in all honesty, I'm a, a pretty active guy for a two weeks shy of 60 individual. I, I tweet massively about events around the world. I do daily podcasts, daily Today in Terrorism series, daily blogs, and I spend a lot of my so-called retired life keeping up on events right around the world that pertain to largely terrorism, but increasingly so other matters that have some link to national security or public safety. And so this very short podcast is a little bit of insight as to how I am able to do this. Let me take you back a bit. For 30 years, when I worked in the Canadian intelligence community, I had access to an incredible amount of information. Signals intelligence or SIGINT, human intelligence or human, intelligence that was collected by Canadian sources, intelligence that was shared with us by the other members of the Five Eyes, the Australia, Canada, New Zealand, UK, US intelligence sharing relationship, as well as intelligence shared by other partners with whom CSIS had what we called a Section 17 arrangement, i.e. the authorization to give and to receive intelligence from partners outside of the traditional Five Eyes. And in all honesty, when I worked in that environment, it was like being a kid in a candy store. I had access to some incredibly interesting, detailed, important information that was derived from intelligence investigations or or derived from Intercept or derived from imagery. I had that on my desktop on a daily basis. I'd get to work in the morning, and the first thing i do is to turn on my computer and see what had been loaded in the database the night before. It was, as I've said to people before, it was a job that I performed for 32 years where I could not wait to get to work in the morning. I really was a very privileged Canadian to have been accorded access and trusted not to disclose that, I'll get back to the issue about disclosure in a, in a future podcast. So yes, I thought I saw myself as a very, very lucky individual. However, now that I have been retired, or so-called retired, from the Canadian intelligence community for five and a half years now, I obviously don't have access to intelligence anymore. I don't have access to SIGINT or HUMANT, intelligence shared with allies. And in all honesty, that was a a bit of a transition to go through. When you're spoiled for three decades to be able to read and listen to this incredible treasure trove of intelligence, and all of a sudden you're cut off because you no longer have a need to know, that's the term we use in the business, it was hard. It was a real break from what I'd been doing for 32 years. One thing that helped me prepare for my post-intelligence retirement though, was I developed a practice when I joined CSIS in the early 2000s to read what was then called the FBIS, the Foreign Broadcasting Information Service, which then morphed into the Open Source Center, which is, I believe, a CIA-run organization, which publishes open source information. So not secret intelligence, not stuff derived from human sources or SIGINT sources, but open source. And as... Canadians, as members of the Canadian intelligence community, we had access to that that site. And I would spend the better part of an hour, hour and a half a day trolling through opensource.gov to read the latest open source information on areas of interest to me, which happened to be the Middle East and terrorism writ large. Unfortunately, even that source of information has been denied me in recent years as I am no longer a civil servant. Open source was only available to Canadian government employees. Trust me, I've tried to get access to it again and been told that I I, I can't have that. Which therefore led me to reconstruct or recreate a new source of open information. What I've done over the past five and a half years is to bookmark 
somewhere on the order of about 200 different websites that I read first thing every morning, either on the treadmill or in my office, to catch up on what's happened around the world on a daily basis, specifically with respect to terrorism. What that means is that I read websites based in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, and in North America. You don't read anything from South America for the simple reason that terrorism is not a real concern there. And of course, I don't read anything from Antarctica, since there's no terrorism there at all. This all takes time. The other thing that I've done is I've made sure that I read multiple sources from the same country. I think, for example, I've bookmarked six or seven Nigerian online news sources. They all say things a little differently. What I'm looking for are facts. I'm looking for what happened, where it happened, and who's behind it. Not so much looking for why it happened. That's my job. My job as, a, as an analyst, my job as a blogger and a podcaster, I'm the guy that's supposed to put some meaning to all this kind of thing. So while I do read analyses from time to time, I don't tend to spend too much effort on that. I find analyses will vary in terms of their rigor, in terms of their usefulness, and even in terms of their accuracy from my perspective. So I'm looking for facts. The other reason why I look at multiple sites from the same country, of course, is that this is an old practice from my intelligence days, and, and that's the cardinal rule of intelligence is corroborate, corroborate, corroborate. Any one source can be inaccurate. Any one source can lie. Any one source can be misleading for a whole host of reasons. We were taught that you had to take a piece of intelligence and try to see from a different independent source if that intelligence was correct. Most of the time we succeeded, not all the time. There have been some embarrassing failures in intelligence where a single source was believed to have the goods on something. I'm referring specifically to the decision to invade Iraq 2003 by the U.S. Bush administration based on a human source that lied about weapons of mass destruction and links to Al-Qaeda. I don't have the same responsibility now to ensure or to need to ensure that my sources are accurate. On the same, the same time, I don't want to be sharing things with my followers on Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook. I don't want to share things that are patently false. I don't want to be made to look stupid. And on occasion, people have pointed out that I got things wrong. And I'm very grateful for the people taking the time to do that. The bottom line is, is that if you do want to figure out what's happening in the world, there's only one way to go about it. And that's to read and read and read. And when you think you're done, you got to read some more. You have to take the time to look at information that's published, not just in the New York Times or the BBC or Al Jazeera, all of which, by the way, I do bookmark, but in the lesser known publications online. You have to look for biases. You have to look on for occasions on which clearly there is a slant there that is leading you away from the mirror, just the facts, ma'am, and bring you down a road where you're being fed something you're being pushed in a certain direction. You're being urged to see things through a, th through a certain lens. I find that's especially true of some of the Middle Eastern sites that I visit. Some are clearly pro-Saudi and very anti-Iranian, -Iran -Iran and therefore I'm a little more careful when I, when I consume news from those sources. The bottom line is that after 30 years of drowning in information, swimming through it on a daily basis, I still recognize that if what I'm going to do is of any use to anybody in 2020. I need to still devote a fair chunk of my day to reading what's happening in the world, thinking about it, making note of it, and then on occasion, weighing in myself with my perspectives, blogs, or Today in Terrorism, or Quick Hits podcasts like this. I really don't think there's any other way of doing it. You know, there's a whole push versus pull. A lot of people will have information pushed to them kind of like YouTube algorithms. I have never been a fan of that. I'd rather go and identify the sources myself and take the time to do it. Now, I have the advantage of being an old retired guy. I can spend two, three hours a day reading. I'm sure many of you, either you're working full time or you have young families or you have other responsibilities, you don't have that luxury. I do, and I can assure you that going forward, I'm gonna keep doing this until such time as it, be, it stops being fun. Right now, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I'm enjoying sharing my analyses and my perspectives on things with you. I know we don't always agree. And I, I do love the debate I, that I, get in, I, I engage in on Twitter and especially on LinkedIn. It's fascinating to me. But my promise to you is that I will keep reading and reading and reading. And when I think I'm done, I'll read some more. And I'll share my thoughts with you. Anyhow, that's what I think. Do you read a lot of material 
from around the world on a regular basis? How do you keep, keep yourself informed? Have you found websites you found of use? I'd love to hear from you. Reach me on email, borealisrisk at gmail.com or on Twitter at borealisapes. You can also find me on LinkedIn and on Facebook. If you like the content and want to receive more, go to my website, borealisthreatenedrisk.com. Hit the subscribe button, provide your email address, you'll get a free daily digest. All the material, the quick hits, the podcast, the blogs, etc. free to your inbox first thing in the morning. I'd love to hear from you. Reaction to this podcast, ideas for other ones. I'll talk to you again soon. Until then, stay safe.